Hello, welcome back to fifth grade green math. I'm Linwood Fields, your green instructor. This is lecture eight. This is what we have been we have been waiting on. Division. Division is so important. The objectives. Know the mechanics of division. Know what a divisor is. Know what a dividend is. Know how to divide a whole number by another whole number. Know what a quotient is. Know what a remainder is. Know that division is fundamentally a grouping problem. So we got quite a few objectives. Yes, we're going to get very busy. Let's look at the motivation. Division is the opposite of multiplication. This lecture and the next few focuses on division, teaches the student how to divide, and assumes no prior knowledge of division. Remember, we stopped with multiplication on the last lecture, but for the most part, multiplication was a review. We will develop division skills and give an intuitive picture of division. And most importantly, we will, we will give the student confidence needed to attack division problems. Consistent with the goal of this textbook, we want the student to leave with an appreciation of why we need division in mathematics and with as little confusion as possible about division. Division is a major turning point in math and is the last of the four basic operations that we study. We usually study addition first and then subtraction, then multiplication, and we leave division for last. Once division is conquered, then we are equipped to take our math journey to another level. First, we will teach the mechanics of division. Then we will show that division is just a quick way of performing subtraction. Now, I cannot overemphasize how important this lecture and the next few lectures are. It is sad, but many students become disinterested in math because of division. A lot of students get frustrated with math because of division. And it really takes away from the progress that they would have made in their succeeding math courses just simply had they not got frustrated with division. Now, when we start looking at uh, fractions, we really, it's going, how well we do with fractions is going to be determined by, by how well we understand division. Please uh, don't take this lecture and the next few lightly. It's a major turning point. This lecture focuses on the mechanics of division. Let's look at the notation. 10 divided by 2, or written another way, 10 divided by 2 means 10 divided by 2. This is, the, is a division symbol. This pair is also a division symbol. 10 is called the dividend. 2 is the divisor. The answer is called the quotient. Now, if the divisor does not divide the dividend evenly, then we will have some left over, which we call the remainder. The remainder is also part of the answer. Now, the statement that if the divisor doesn't divide the dividend evenly, that's going to become clearer as we work our way through division. So simply try to digest what each part of a division problem is. You're always going to have a dividend, a divisor, and 
your answer is, is going to be composed of two parts, the quotient and the remainder. Sometimes the remainder will be zero. If we use long division notation, these parts up here would be represented as shown here. The divisor would be at this position. The dividend would be here. On top of the dividend would be the quotient. And to the right of the quotient and dividend is the remainder. So up here, two is the divisor. So two would be here. 10 is the dividend, so 10 would be here. We have to find the quotient and the remainder. Long division is useful when the dividend and or the divisor have many digits. So in a simple problem like up here, long division is not needed. Basically, division is a grouping problem. It's all about how many groups we can form or how many items we're going to put in a group. Case one, the, div the dividend is always the total number of items that we're trying to divide up. Now, the divisor and the quotient can be one of two cases. In this case one here, the divisor is how many items we want in each group. This is going to be known information. The quotient, which is part of the answer, is the number of groups. So basically, if we divide up the total number of items and we know how many we want in each group, the problem is reduced to finding the number of groups, which would be the quotient. In case two, again, the dividend is always the total number of items. But this time, the divisor is the number of groups that we are given, as opposed to how many items we want in each group. OK, and the quotient this time is how many items are going to be in each group, as opposed to the number of groups. The quotient is the answer to the problem for either case, though. The divisor and the dividend are given information for either case. It is not necessary to identify which case a division problem belongs in. However, we do have to correctly identify both the dividend and the divisor. Being able to identify the case makes the problem makes the problem easier to understand. Let's work an example. We're going to divide whole numbers. Let's say that I want to divide five dimes evenly between two students. How many dimes will each student get? Okay, there are five dimes. One, two, three, four, five that needs to be divided up. So five is the total number of items. So five is the dividend. We have one, two students. Now in case one in the previous slide, the divisor is how many items we want in each group and is known. For this problem, we were not told how many items are to be in each group. Therefore, if we think of each student as a group, even though we know a group should probably have more than one in it, then the quotient would be how many items or how many dimes are given to each group or to each student. Therefore, case two makes the most sense. Regardless of which case makes the most sense, the important point is that two is going to be the divisor because five is the dividend. So five divided by two, five is the dividend, two is the divisor. Five divided by two is equal to what? 
we ask ourselves, two times what is equal to five? Two times what, this question mark represents what? Two times what is equal to five? Notice that there is no whole number we can multiply by two and get five. So we ask ourselves, what number can I multiply two by to get a number close to five, but that's less than five? We can multiply two by two and get four, which is close to five. We can also multiply two by one and get two. Two times one is two, but four, which is two times two, is closer to five than two is. And notice, in four is not larger than five. Had we multiplied two times three and got six, then six would have been too large. We have to get a number close to five, but less than five. Therefore, we choose to multiply, to this, this is supposed to be multiply two by two. Two times two is four. And let us call four our closest number to five. Because our closest number to five, which is four, does not equal to the dividend, which is five, we have a remainder. To find the remainder, we just subtract the closest number, which is four, from the dividend, which is five. Five minus four is equal to one. So five divided by two is equal to two with a remainder of one. Each student gets two dimes and one dime is left over. The leftover dime is the remainder. How can we check our work? Okay, to check your work, what you can do is multiply the quotient, which is two, or your answer that you got, uh, the two, multiply two times the divisor, two times two is four, and add the remainder. Four plus one should equal two, the dividend, five. Again, multiply the quotient, which is two, times the divisor, which is two, and then that gets you four, and to that, you're going to add the remainder. Four plus one is five. Always check your work. Example two, I want to divide 10 dimes evenly between five students. How many dimes will each student get? So here's the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 dimes. So there are 10 items that need to be divided up. So the dividend, the total number of items that need to be divided up is 10. One, two, three, four, five students. In case one, the, the divisor is how many items we want in each group and is known. We were not told how many items are to be in each group. Therefore, thinking of each student as a group again, even though we know a group should probably have more than one, then the quotient would be how many items or dimes are given to each group or student. Therefore, case two makes more sense again. Regardless of which case makes most sense, the important point is that five is going to be the divisor because 10 is the dividend. 10 divided by five is equal to what? Here's the 10 dimes and the five students to remind, of, to remind ourselves of what problem we are solving. 10 divided by five is equal to what? We ask ourselves, five times what, represented by the question mark, is equal to 10? Boy, I need to review my multiplication tables right now. 
Oh, I just remembered that five times two is exactly 10. So the answer must be two. Notice that there is no remainder this time. So 10 divided by five is equal to two with a remainder of zero. Each student gets, each student gets two dimes. How can we check our work? Again, if we multiply the quotient times the divisor, which is five, two times five is 10, and add the remainder, which is zero, 10 plus zero is 10, which is the dividend. Always check your work. So here's a picture of the situation. Here are the 10 dimes, and this student gets two, this student gets two, this student gets two, this student gets two, and the last student gets two. So each student gets two dimes. So it looks like we have, if we consider each student a group, each group gets two dimes. Now we're going to rework examples one and two with long division. And here's the long division notation again. The divisor is on the left, the dividend is here, the quotient is on top of the dividend and the remainder is to the right. Okay, remember in, the, in example two, we had 10 dimes that were to be divided up amongst five students and we wanted to know how many dimes each student got. So let's go ahead and work this problem. We're going to draw our symbol here. And the divisor, in this case, we identified as the number of students one, two, three, four, five. The divisor was five. The dividend was the total number of items. So the dividend is 10. Now at this point, we have to ask ourselves, will five go into one? No, five will not go into one because one is less than five. Will five go into 10? Meaning that is there a number that I can multiply five by to get 10? Of course there is two. Five times Two is 10. Now, why do we put the two above the zero? Because, because five would not go into one. One is less than five, but five will go into 10. So we put the two with the rightmost digit in 10. The rightmost digit is zero. Then we multiply two times five. Two times five is equal to 10. And then we subtract. 10 minus 10 is zero. Because zero is less than five, we are finished. So zero is the remainder. So let's put the zero right here, consistent with this notation, consistent with this notation up here. So we put the zero right here. Zero is the remainder. And so now we identify the five as the divisor, 10 as the dividend. The part of the answer, the quotient is two, and the remainder, which is also part of the answer, is zero. Okay, so let's go to example one. Okay, in example one, let's go ahead and write the division, long division symbol. Here the divisor was two. The dividend or total number of items was five. At this point, we ask ourselves, how many times will two go into five? Well, two will go into five 
uh, two times. So we put a two here because two times two is four. Now we multiply two times two and get four. Subtract four from five. Five minus four is equal to one. Because one is less than two, we're finished. So one is the remainder. So let's go ahead and put the remainder right here so that we're consistent with this notation up here. That's all there is to long division. Again, long division wasn't needed for these simple problems, but this should help you to understand long division. We're gonna do more with long division uh, in the next lecture or two. Summary. The dividend is the number being divided up, or we can say that the dividend is the total number of items. The divisor is the number that you divide by. The quotient is the number of times that the divisor goes into the dividend. The quotient is also part of the answer. The remainder is the difference between the dividend and the product of the divisor and the quotient. So in other words, the, rem the remainder is equal to the dividend minus the divisor times the quotient. So you multiply the quotient times the divisor, then whatever that number is, you subtract that from the dividend. It is what is left over if the divisor does not divide the dividend evenly. The remainder is the other part of the answer. Fundamentally, division is a grouping problem. Practice problems are given at the end of the next lecture. Thanks for your time. I'm looking forward to seeing you at the next lecture. Have a great day.